So while I've spent time going into the marketplace, finding these option prices, I thought that it might be worthwhile just highlighting um, some things that are often talked about but are hard to actually do yourself. So we're going to look at the ASX 200 um, volatility smile over different strikes. So volatility skew is sometimes referred to as horizontal skew and vertical skew. Horizontal skew is what we've just done uh, with different time horizons looking at the implied volatility of at the money options in the marketplace. That is essentially what we've just plotted in our historical uh, volatility cone. So in contrast to that, what is vertical skew? Well, vertical skew is when you consider options in the marketplace at the same time horizon, but across different strikes. So we're looking at out of the money options, in the money options, and at the money options. So essentially by looking at this skew, we can get a good gauge of where supply and demand in the marketplace is. Now, by looking at this for the ASX 200, um, for September, uh, call and put options, I've come up with the above volatility skews. Now you can see for that low curve in the right hand corner, that is actually for the call options and the higher implied volatility curves are for the put options. Again, I've represented this in terms of the bid and the ask prices that I can see in the marketplace. So here I've plotted where the underlying is at the moment, which is the level of the index, and that's 7,375, and that's the black line that's represented in this graph. So as you can see, for out of the money put options, that implied volatility that's demanded from the market maker um, as a service to be able to hedge that product, that increases. And that could be because it is harder to hedge those particular products and because not a lot of competition is out there in the order book at those certain strikes. So therefore the market maker um, is demanding a higher price for those products. This is what has actually created this volatility smirk, I would call it. Maybe not a smile, but this is a bit of a smirk. So for out of the money put options, you can see the higher implied volatility and as you come closer to at the money options, this really levels out. So this is the volatility smirk. Now thinking again where the market maker is putting this bid and ask for both the put and the calls, I thought, is there any way you can actually win? And by win, I use that in a relatively loose term because the market maker's ability to be able to profit is based off realized volatility, as we've already said. We'll get into how they do it in the next video, but I wanted to talk about something that's more in terms of traditional option theory, and that is the put-call parity. So for European options, the put-call parity is a formula that can determine whether something is overpriced or underpriced in the marketplace, and how you can go about um, actually getting an arbitrage situation because of those pricings in the marketplace. So for this example, I'm going to take at the money call options for the September 21 uh, put and call options on the index. Now we can see that of course, there's a bid and an ask price for both of them. So I've separated them out here. So if I want to long the call, essentially I have to um, buy that product from the market maker. So I will be paying the ask price, so the call ask. If I want to sell a call to the market maker, then I'm going to need to hit the bid. So this is essentially the same thing for the put. So given that, given where the bids and the asks are, because the puts are so much higher than the calls, can I actually profit by transacting in the bank account, the underlying, so maybe the futures contracts, and those two products, the put and the call? Well, let's see. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna consider two scenarios. One where the put is um, overpriced and therefore I'm going to short what is overpriced and I'm going to buy what is cheap. So I'm going to buy the call option and I'm going to sell the put. Vice versa, we can actually, if we believe that the call is overpriced, we can sell the call and we can buy back the put. Now, the way we can actually determine which one is profitable at these given market levels is by using this payoff formula that I've come up with here. 
Now, I'm pretty sure I haven't messed anything up. It is pretty tricky understanding option indexes and the contract multiply in terms of payoff. So if you notice anything funny about any of my calculations, go to my website and comment down in the section below. But hopefully I've done the right thing. So let's continue. Let's consider those two different payoffs. So if I go long the put and I short the call, what else do I have to do? Well, I have to borrow money from the money market, let's say my bank account, and that's going to be at the interest-free rate for that given time period, continuously compounded. Then we're going to use that money and we're going to buy the underlying. So by doing this, we can see what the value of that payoff is going to be. Note for the underlying, I've actually assumed that we're going to buy the mini ASX futures, so the SPY mini futures, and for that, there's a contract multiplier of $5. So we're gonna to have to buy two of them to get that same contract equivalent multiplier. Now, by looking at that payoff, we can see that we get around a loss of um, $778. So let's consider the other direction now. Let's short the, the put and we're going to buy back the call. So we're going to sell what is expensive and buy back what is cheap. Now we're going to short the futures, the mini futures, two futures contracts, and we're going to get that money and we're gonna put it in the bank account at the risk-free rate. Now, please check my calcs on this, but I believe that at those prices, you would get around a profit of $528. But I haven't included transaction costs for any of those transactions. And that will probably erode all those profits there. But it is interesting to see that this put call parity does really still come into play. Although it's traditional European option um, finance, we've just found a real world example where it exists. Now, what benefit does the market maker really have? Well, the market maker has the biggest advantage of them all because they can actually buy at, at the low at their bid prices and they can sell at their ask prices. And that gives them the largest opportunity possible to take advantage of these pricing situations. So I'm hoping that you learned a lot today. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how they actually go about hedging an option position on the back of being hit on the ask or the bid and therefore how they're making their money with respect to this realized volatility. So if you enjoyed the content today, feel free to hit the like button. And if you wanna see more content like this and follow on with the Kaggle challenge over the next couple of months, please subscribe to the channel because we're going to be uploading for the next two months videos on how we're doing this process, how we're coming up with the realized volatility and submitting uh, our best notebook possible to this challenge. So stay tuned for that.